What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new video. We're gonna design a sci-fi cube using geometry nodes. For the first time, I'm gonna introduce a paid add-on. It's called JMOGRAPH and it's really interesting, especially if you come from Cinema 4D where Cloner and Effector add a really big place in your workflow. We're gonna create two different materials and we're gonna use a texture that we will create. Well, actually a software will create for us and it took a very big spot in every 3D artist tool belt. As always, let's get to it. For this tutorial, we're gonna use a paid add-on. It is definitely something you can do without it using geometry nodes, but I wanna show this one to you because I feel like it is such a speed booster, especially when you're familiar with Cinema 4D cloners and effectors. You can do in two nodes something that will take you 10 or 20 nodes, and I will put the link down below. I will not cover the installation of the plugin since there's a video which will help you step by step. I reinstalled the screencast keys, so hopefully uh, it works this time. I'm gonna start by adding a cube, shift A, cube. I'm gonna open a new window for geometry nodes. I'm gonna hit new, and that's where I'm gonna use this new plugin. Shift A, group, and I'm gonna use a cloner grid. I'm gonna drag that here. I'm gonna create another cube, shift A, mesh, cube. I'm gonna add a bevel to this one. Add modifier, bevel, six segments, and I will set that to 0.05. I can rename the cube because there's gonna be a bunch of cubes, so cube base. And I can hide this one now. I'm gonna click back on the first cube and I'm gonna rename this one GN for geo nodes and big because there's gonna be two sets of cubes, the big ones and the small ones. In the geometry nodes, I'm gonna select my object, cube base. And now very quickly, I'm gonna start seeing some of these controls that I had in Cinema 4D with cloners. So three and three, maybe I'm gonna do six and six. If you want your render to be more plain, go ahead with that. In the count Z, I'm also gonna input six. I can either play with the grid size or the scale, but I'm gonna play with the grid size for now. If I set it to two, all my cubes will be slightly touching, so maybe 2.01. I'm gonna click back on the cube base actually because I forgot to right click and shade out of mousse. I'm gonna add another node from this paid plugin, which is really great. Shift A, group, effector, step. It works exactly the same way as it works on C4D. Since it's a pretty simple setup, I'm not gonna use a empty to control the step effector. So I'm just gonna play with the scale, zero being the original scale. So if I reduce that a little bit, I will have the effect I'm looking for. Hey, what's up? JM from the future here. I didn't plan on covering that in the first place, but I think the original philosophy of this channel is to be able to use a free software and be able to do everything using this free software without paid add-ons. I'm gonna show you how to replicate the same effect using GeoNodes. I will link a channel down below, which is one of my friends, and he has a ton of really cool content, especially if you're moving out of Cinema 4D. More recently, he's been diving into GeoNodes, and he's the person I'm going to every time I have a question about Geo notes. Love that guy. So check out his video and his channel and drop a sub. I'm not gonna explain every step of the way, but this is how the Geo notes looks like in the end. Really quickly, I have a big cube that I subdivided. I have the same cube that I used. I am using the subdivided cube to instance on points the cube that we created with the bevel. And I'm using an empty to drive all of the math behind the scaling. Once this is done, you can move your empty left and right and even animate the scale. Back to yesterday's JM. So let's move on. I'm gonna select the big cube, go to the materials, create new materials. I'm gonna add a last group, which this one comes with Blender and it's gonna be set material. And I'm gonna select cube big. Let's create the second set of cubes. I'm gonna copy and paste this one. I can delete the cube base because I'm gonna reference the same cube here. Cube base. This one's gonna be called small. Same thing. I can directly duplicate this material and call it small. And here I will select small. Since I want the cube to be a little bit smaller, on the instant scale, I'm gonna set that to 0.9. And I don't have to change this scale since it's gonna be scaling the same way as the first cube. To look at the geo, let's click on the wireframe mode. And if I scroll and zoom in, I can see there's two cubes, one inside and one outside. And if I stick to the side views, 
everything is perfectly aligned. So I have a big cube and a small cube. So we're done with the geometry nodes. Let's move on to the materials. I'm gonna go to Shader Editor. I am gonna turn on the viewport shading and I'm gonna use one of the default HDRI. So I'm gonna click on Scene World. I'm gonna remove the floor and my axis. I'm gonna select the big cube and this one is gonna be a glass material. So we're gonna set the transmission to one. The roughness is quite even everywhere and I don't really like that. So we're gonna introduce a noise texture, Control T for mapping and texture coordinate. I'm gonna set that to object. I'm gonna introduce a color ramp and I'm gonna plug that to the roughness. Already we can see something is happening here. Let me try a different HDRI. This one is actually a little bit better to see exactly what's happening. On the noise texture, I'm going to turn the detail to 15 and I'm going to decrease the scale to 1. I'm going to preview the color ramp. I can increase the blacks a little bit and I'm going to change the white value to something gray. The main issue here is the repeating pattern. I really don't like that. So let me show you a really cool trick to have a different mapping for each individual object. And if we preview everything in there, you will see there's a few very interesting parameters. The random output will generate a different value for each instance. So we're going to use that data to actually shift our location. So this introduced a little bit more randomness, but you can tell some of them are actually still quite similar. So we're going to increase this data by adding a math node. And you can set that to multiply, for example, and increase the value. I'm going to set that to 4 because now everything looks quite different and I really like that. I want to preview the principal BSDF, so Control shift and left click. I'm going to switch my HDRI to have a better preview of that roughness map. Maybe let's decrease this gray value a little bit so it's more white and there's more range between the two colors. Let's move on to the second material now. So this software is free, it's called GS Placement. It's absolutely amazing. It can help you create these placement maps or any different maps. Apparently the creator reported that the user were pretty abusive toward him. And so we removed his software out of the internet. You can still find it in the archive.org and I'm gonna put a link down below. But let's try this amazing piece of software. Once it's launched, go to the menu on the top left and click on dot grid. What I like to do is usually remove those kind of shapes and hit generate. Just to do a really quick segue, there's also different things you can use here to generate really interesting patterns and displacement maps. I can't stress enough how amazing that tool is. It is used by everyone in the industry to generate spaceship gribble or quickly add a lot of details to your model. Back to Blender, I'm gonna hide the big cubes I'm going to disable the temporary HDRI. I'm going to go to the world and set the world to black. I'm going to go back to object. And this time I don't want this material to be transparent, but use a texture to emit light. I'm going to add a image texture. I'm going to hit Ctrl T. I can still keep that to UV. That's fine. And I'm going to open up the image I just generated. I'm going to add a color ramp and I'm gonna plug the color to the emission. Now something is happening, let's zoom in. I'm gonna increase the strength to 20. And now we have an emissive texture on those cubes. We're gonna use the color ramp to do two things. The first one is gonna be driving the color. I'm gonna switch from linear to constant. As I move this slider, I can introduce more or less of the texture. The dots have a really cool style, but what I like to do is actually stretch that texture a little bit. So we're almost there. This looks pretty weak. And even if I had my glass material, that's not gonna change anything. Same principle as for the glass material. We can see the texture is repeating on every cube the same way. So we're gonna solve that introducing a object info and using the random as the location. I can also use a math node if I want to. I can change the value to something I like. One seems pretty fine for now. I'm going to work with my camera angle for a second. To increase the sci-fi and dramatic effect, I'm going to switch the type to orthographic. And I can tweak the scale using this input. So it's definitely up to you which style you are going for. Let's introduce some color. I'm going to click on this slider and I'm going to choose a blue light. And if you think JM, it really looks bad. 
I will agree with you because we need to do one more step to make this render look amazing. As you can tell, the texture is actually black and white, but we can hide everything that is black by plugging this color to the alpha. I'm gonna turn back on the previous material. I'm gonna set the strength to 10 or five. And now we have the complete form. I'm gonna render a few frames. I'm gonna use depth of field. I'm gonna try close-ups or more further away from the cube. I am also gonna play a little bit with the geometry nodes. You are probably familiar with the process at that point, so I'm gonna speed up the video and we will come back for the final thoughts. I love this image, so I'm gonna make a small break to explain you how I did it. On the glass material, I used one of those maps generated with JS Placement 2, and I used it as a pump. I used the object info to randomize the placement, and I think it looks really sick. Once again, the power of iteration. I'm gonna do one more angle with that setup, and then I'll show you all of the renders. This is the final result. I have tried different angles. I have tried different texture. I plugged some things in bump. I tweaked how much light will go in and out. Now you have all of the tools to create an unlimited amount of variations. I would love to see what you're doing with those techniques. So feel free to share with me. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you learned a thing or two. If this video has been valuable to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe or share with a friend who's trying to learn Blender. Obviously, feel free to leave a comment, that's always appreciated, and I will see you in the next video.